Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for April 16th, 2024. Today I'm gonna to be discussing the absolute corruption of the US Congress, both parties, from the top to the bottom. And the specific area I'm gonna be discussing is the permanent war strategy of the military industrial financial complex, which has been accepted fully by leaders of both parties, by members of Congress in both parties, it, which, which is pushed in the mainstream media, the think tanks, the universities, and anyone who steps out of line is under attack. So let's take a look at the, the latest developments around the funding for Ukraine and Israel. The Biden administration has presented a 90 plus billion dollar package which includes 60 billion plus for Ukraine, 14 billion for Israel on top of the 4 billion, nearly 4 billion they get every year, and a little bit for the other concerns, including for Taiwan. So it's a, a war bonus. Now the money goes where? The 60 billion, most of it goes to the military industrial financial complex in the United States. And the money that goes to Ukraine ends up feathering the nest of the Zelensky kleptocrats. In the meantime, the war is lost. Why spend the money for a war that's lost? Well, here's the real reason. The desire of the war hawks is to arm Ukraine enough so that they'll continue to, quote, weaken Russia, unquote, as Defense Secretary Austin, who, by the way, comes from the old military industrial financial complex of Raytheon. So here's the latest. After holding the Ukraine funding back for months, Speaker Johnson has now made it clear he's going to present separate bills for Ukraine and Israel. The reason for this is straightforward. There's opposition in the Republican Party to funding Ukraine, the Ukraine war, but there's support for the war in Israel, the Israeli assault on Gaza. On the other side, the Democrats, for the most part, fully support both of these, although there's growing opposition among Democrats to the funding of Israel, especially after the International Court of Justice said there's a plausible case that Israel is committing genocide against the Palestinians. Now, Johnson is trying to push it through in a separate funding bill. Now, the the pressure coming from the Biden administration is of the form, Ukraine is desperate, they must have money, they must have ammunition, otherwise Putin will take over Europe, which is a completely absurd formulation. And the Republican war hawks are totally committed to funding Israel and the Israeli genocide against the Palestinians. Now there is opposition in the Republicans, Marjorie Taylor Greene in particular, has threatened to take out House Speaker Johnson if he pushes this through. But Johnson has support from whom? The Democrats. Hakeem Jeffries has said if there's a motion to remove him, the Democrats will vote against it to keep him in there. He's also just gotten a stamp of approval from the Republican Party presidential candidate, Donald Trump, Johnson met with him in Mar-a-Lago last Friday. They came out arm in arm. Trump said, I fully support him. And what Johnson then said is that his approach to Ukraine has changed. He now supports what Trump proposed, which they're calling a loan lease agreement in which the 60 billion would be a loan to Ukraine. Now, there are two problems with that. One is, it's never going to be repaid. Ukraine is being destroyed as a nation, and the longer the war goes, the more it's going to be carved up and the less there will be of Ukraine. So it's not going to be repaid. So it's the same as just giving them the money. But secondly, and more important, whatever happened to principle? I thought the Republicans were opposing the money to Ukraine based on the idea that it's money going to the military industrial financial complex for permanent wars. Wars that do nothing to uh, augment American security and actually weaken the security of the United States. 
So what happened to the idea that there's no funding for the deep state war is based on fake intelligence? Well, they're going to trade it away. Trade it away to try and get money for protecting the U.S. border. Why is there even a quid pro quo on something like this for something that seems obvious? So Johnson, with the bailout coming from the Democrats, is now prepared to go ahead with this. Now, then we saw another aspect of Johnson's speakership. Three times the Republicans voted down the bill to authorize the FISA court for another five years. Remember, the FISA court is a surveillance agency that spies on Americans and foreigners. They say it doesn't spy on Americans, but we know it does because during Russiagate, it was spying on President Trump. And the FBI went to the FISA court many times with lies, with lies about Russiagate to get approval to go ahead and do wiretaps and other such things. So what did Johnson do? He compromised. He said, OK, let's instead of authorizing it for five years, we'll authorize it for just two years. And they passed it after voting it down three times. The fourth time it passed. Well, again, where are the principles of statecraft? Why give a rubber stamp to the deep state to continue the secret surveillance that intimidates and suppresses Americans and makes it criminal to oppose the government of the oligarchy? Now, then on the separate bill to fund Israel, there's support for many of the Republicans and also almost all of the Biden Democrats. That's starting to change a little bit because of the absolute uh, brutal nature of the Israeli occupation and uh, pounding of Gaza, the killing of uh, tens of thousands of children and, and women. For what? Supposedly the war on terror. Well, the war on terror has been one of the biggest boondoggles of the military industrial financial complex in part because the MIFC is funding the terrorists, as in Syria, as we found out that Netanyahu gave over a billion dollars to Hamas to split the Palestinians into two separate camps. So again, where are the principles? Now, here's an interesting point. Take the case of Pelosi, and there's no more corrupt person in the Congress than Nancy Pelosi. At one point, she said those who are opposing the money for Israel should be investigate, investigated because they're probably on Putin's payroll. She called on an FBI investigation for people who were demonstrating outside her home and in the Congress against the funding for Israel. Pelosi basically said, we must put Israel first. We'll never pull back from funding Israeli uh, operations and defending them. It's a permanent obligation. Then she pivoted and said, we must stop the suffering in Gaza, but to call for a ceasefire is Putin's message. Well, how are you going to stop the suffering if you're continuing to bombard the housing that uh, re the refugees from northern Gaza are crowded into? It's a complete hypocritical statement, typical of the pro-war faction. Now, She's saying the same thing with the opposition to funding Ukraine. It's Putin's message. It's Putin's policy that the Republicans are following. So it's the old Russiagate story. And then on April 9th, a letter from 40 Democrats to Biden called on him to stop the arms transfer to Israel after the killing of seven aid workers from the World Central Kitchen. Pelosi signed the letter. So which is it? Total support for Israel or withholding the funds? Now, the Biden administration has responded by saying they're considering conditions on the aid to Israel related to uh, lessening the suffering of the Palestinians. You want to lessen the suffering of the Palestinians? Stop sending the weapons and the money to Israel and tell them there'll be no more support from the United States. But he won't do that because the permanent war faction controls both parties in Washington. Now, finally, we come to the hypocrisy over the uh, Iran drone and missile strikes against Israel. 
Now, what's clear is that the Iranians gave Israel and the U.S. plenty of warning so that the missiles could be intercepted. And secondly, to avoid civilian casualties. The Israelis had no such uh, withholding of firepower when they attacked the Iranian embassy or the Iranian consulate in Damascus. <clears throat> and that killed 13 people. But here's the interesting thing. Virtually everyone in the West is condemning the Iranian retaliation. None of them condemn the Israeli strike that caused Iran to retaliate. And so what you see again is the stinking hypocrisy of the political leaders who are completely controlled. They're, they're corrupted by the war establishment. And the war establishment includes supporters of Israel, but it's not run by supporters of Israel. It's run by the same people who control NATO and are funding the proxy war against Russia. And here's the point. The rest of the world sees this. This is why there's a move away from the unipolar order toward a multipolar world. Will Americans get the point? Will Europeans? Well, we have to. We have to make sure people understand this. And one of the ways to get at this is to look at the difference that a policy based on principle would represent. And that's what we discussed last Saturday at the OASIS policy conference. I'm going to append this again to the, uh, a link to that in the description section because it's important for people to see that dialogue is possible and that what the OASIS plan represents is the idea of an economic incentive to all parties to stop the fighting and the killing. And that's statecraft, not the kind of backroom deals and, and uh, uh, fundraising that, that we see with both parties today in the United States. So thanks for joining me. Get active. Become part of our movement.